This is a Sunpack Auto 455 flash unit, also known as a G4500, attached to a Pentax LX film camera here. It was produced during the late film era, but I don't know the exact production dates. It has a guide number of 45 meters with a standard beam angle, which puts it in the highest power category. It's a hammerhead unit, and like most of them, it fixes the camera via the tripod mount screw here. This particular bracket was fairly standard on some pack hammerheads of that period, and the unit can be released from the bracket by unscrewing this thumb screw here and pressing it in like a button. That makes it easier to change film or change the batteries in the unit itself. It can be fitted on at different angles. That's actually appropriate for units that didn't have tilt heads, but it's not necessary on this particular one. You can swivel this clamp around by loosening these screws so you could use the flash unit on the other side. This is also enables you to hold the flash up as a like a torch separately from the camera. If if you like to shoot that way. 555 doesn't have dedication here to any particular camera although the similar model of 555 did have dedication modules. It connects the camera with this special cord which is unique to Sunpack which goes into the camera's X socket it has one. If it doesn't have one you can use one of these adapters that uh, fit into the camera hot shoe. The head had clip-on adapters so this one which could take a, something like a diffuser coloured filter and it would also telephoto reflector that would clip on here. This is not a particularly good arrangement to be honest. The head can tilt up to the vertical and swivel completely round. So that it can be used for flash bounce lighting onto a ceiling or a side wall in either portrait or landscape format. Looking at the back there's a switch with one off position and two ons for external battery pack and internal batteries which I'm using now. When you switch it on after it charges the uh, test and ready light comes on as here. The external battery pack will be used or would have been used by press photographers for rapid recharging for a large capacity. At the top there's a slider moved by this knob here to set the film speed or ISO number as shown in this opposite this pointer here. This doesn't have any connection to anything, it's just a calculator which I shall come to. On the left there's a slide switch to switch between four different modes. The one at the top is M for manual which simply is a full power flash. And in this mode you simply read the uh, distance of the subject on this scale in feet or meters against the F numbers up here. For example we could take a picture four meters away at F22 or 16 metres away at f5.6 or any other combination you can find on the scales. These coloured markers don't have any relevance in the manual mode. There's only the one manual power level. Below the manual mode there are three auto modes colour coded red, yellow and green. And in these modes the power output is controlled by the photo sensor on the front to give the required amount of lighting and 
no more, saving the rest of the energy for the next shot. But in these modes the camera aperture must be set to the value indicated on the scale here. For example we're in ISO 400 and it's saying in the red mode we should set the aperture to f16 as shown in the window here. In the auto modes the distances shown on the white scale are now the range over which the system is usable. The range is shown by the extent of the appropriate coloured line. For instance in the red mode we could take a picture subject distance from anywhere between 0.7 metres and 5.6 metres. In the yellow mode anywhere from 1 metre up to 11. The maximum range is obtained in the green mode up to 22 metres away but then you need to set the aperture to f4. Notice there's a limitation in auto mode of the maximum distance in this case at red it will be 22 metres with an aperture of f4. If you want to get the maximum range out of this unit you would actually go back to the manual mode and in this case you could use f2 and get a picture up to 45 metres away. Despite the fact that the 455 model was primarily for the North American market and the 4500 for elsewhere, both feet and meter scales are on both models, which is unnecessary clutter. The only difference between the models is the sticker on the front. The ready test light at the bottom is also a button to fire a test shot, which I would do. And the green light there indicates that the lighting was satisfactory. It shows very briefly, too briefly in fact. On its left side is a socket for the external power pack supply. And on the right is the connector for the special sink lead that goes to the camera X socket. It takes six AA batteries in the head which fit into this battery holder. Sunpack did sell a block that was effectively the same as this. You can put either alkaline or nickel metal hydride batteries in here. I find these a bit fiddly to get in and out of this so I actually charge recharge this as a, as a block from a power supply. Some pack did provide that power supply as well. But if you want a hammerhead today you just look on the second hand market such as eBay. The good news is that even, even mint condition units are far cheaper than a new modern hot shoe one. Even if you buy a dud on eBay you can afford to buy another several times over. These particular units cost about £100 in the UK when they were still in production, equivalent to about £300 today, but I've, I've bought this one for £6. If you do buy a Sunpack hammerhead, make sure it comes with a bracket, with a special connecting lead and with a battery holder because it will be useless without any of those. And people sell them separately for prices as high as a complete outfit. The 455 in this video has relatively simple and intuitive controls but it has its limitations such as having only one manual power level. Those limitations are overcome in the very similar model 544 also known as the 4205G but that's at the expense of more complex and less intuitive controls but uh, perhaps I'll cover that in a, another video. Thanks for watching.